Okay, let's move on to chronic gastritis and pernicious anemia. So chronic gastritis is not due to acid production, okay? When you think of gastritis, it makes sense, but I want you to think about it from the perspective of repeated inflammation or, or injury. And so here's how I like to differentiate acute gastritis, chronic gastritis, and peptic ulcer disease in my head. It's not 100% true. It's more of like a, I don't know, like a teleological explanation, but this helps me categorize them very well so I don't get confused. And so some similarities is that they all involve some sort of inflammation or damage to your gastric mucosa. They all have similar presentations. They're all treated with PPIs in some cases. And H. pylori or NSAIDs can cause problems in a couple of the conditions. You can get cancer in a couple of these conditions. So it's hard to differentiate sometimes. I remember it like this. My acute gastritis is my, I just think of acute gastritis is an acid problem. So I just think it has to be due to one of those six causes that we talked about before. I, and it has to be some imbalance in these, these mechanisms. And I like to think about it in terms of how deep it goes. So I, I think about it, the acute gastritis, I think about it in the, as a surface epithelium problem, because that's where my mucus defenses are anyways. I, I just think about it like that. Again, that's not necessarily true. This could obviously still cause ulcers if the damage gets deep enough, but I want you to remember it like this. Acute gastritis affects the surface epithelium. That'll help you remember that it's an acid problem. It's a mucus problem. Chronic gastritis gets a little deeper, okay? So it's, it's affecting our upper glandular layer. And do you remember what's in our upper glandular layer? Our parietal cells, right? And so this helps me remember that chronic gastritis has to do with problems with my um, parietal cells. And we'll see that in a little bit and what that looks like. And peptic ulcer disease, I think of the D and PUD as PU deep. It's very deep, it goes through everything and it can cause a lot of problems. If it's going through everything, you can call it, you can reach the blood vessels and cause bleeding. If, if you reach, if you go through everything, you can cause a perforation. So that's kind of what I remember. PUD is deep. Okay, I'll go over these. This is just kind of a, a tangent that I like to go on because I think it's a good way to structure these three diseases. Okay, so chronic gastritis. It's chronic inflammation of the gastric mucosa. You can have autoimmune gastritis or chronic H. pylori infection can cause gast chronic gastritis, okay? So let's talk about autoimmune gastritis. It's gonna be damage to your parietal cells and it's usually autoimmune. I mean, it is autoimmune. Um, and that's kind of why I took that framework a couple slides ago where it, the chronic gastritis affects my upper glandular layer because it reminds me that what's really happening in the chronic autoimmune form is that my parietal cells are dying. So right here, if we go back, you can see if white blood cells come in and they start killing off our parietal cells, we're gonna have a problem. And all the presentation of chronic autoimmune gastritis is really simple if you think about it, because we know parietal cells do two things. They, per, they secrete HCL and they secrete intrinsic factor. So let's talk about what happens when we don't have enough of these. Well, for HCL, if you don't have enough of these, you'll get achlorhydria, you'll get increased stomach pH, and you'll get G-cell hyperplasia. Okay, so let's talk about what each of these three things mean real quick, just to make sure we all understand it. Achlorhydria is just the absence of HCL in your gastric secretions. It's, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't have a parietal cell in the first place, you can't produce any of these ions and secrete them into the lumen. So you'll get achlorhydria. Now, increased stomach pH should also make sense. If you're not producing an acid in your lumen, your pH is gonna go up. It's gonna become more basic. And now the third one, this G-cell hyperplasia, again, this should make sense. If we go back to our gastrin regulation slide in our physiology section, we talked about how when the lumen of the stomach gets basic, you're going to increase your release of gastrin, right? We even mentioned that one of the conditions by which your um, stomach becomes more basic is chronic gastritis, which is what we're talking about right now. So if we have chronic gastritis, 
our pH is increasing, what's going to happen is that a feedback is going to cause our G cells to get really strong and they're going to overproduce gastrin. And so you'll get elevated gastrin and your G cells will get become hyper, uh, there's going to be G cell hyperplasia in the process. Now let's talk about the loss of intrinsic factor. When you lose intrinsic factor, you develop something called pernicious anemia, which I've alluded to in the B12 deficiency portion of this lecture, but I haven't talked about directly. So pernicious anemia, just why it was named that in the first place, um, pernicious actually means harmful, causing great ruin and fatal. And the reason it was named this is because this used to be incurable, which is crazy to think about. Uh, vitamin deficiency used to be incurable. So what happens here is that the parietal cells are destroyed. Because of that, you lose all your intrinsic factor. And without intrinsic factor, you're going to develop a B12 deficiency. And so here was our B12 absorption slide earlier. I'm just going to show you that intrinsic factor was one of the requirements for appropriate B12 absorption. And then on our, the right side, I'm going to show you all the different mechanisms by which intrinsic factors needed. So we have our intrinsic factors produced, and then ultimately intrinsic factor will bind to B12 somewhere in the small intestine, and it's going to travel with B12, and then it'll get absorbed, and that can go to the liver. Let me go back for a second. If we don't have intrinsic factor, B12 cannot get into your liver, I mean, into your bloodstream. So you'll develop a B12 deficiency. And that's kind of what, that is what happens in, in pernicious anemia. And so this can be caused by a few different things. Right now we're talking about chronic autoimmune gastritis. If you don't have parietal cells, then you don't have intrinsic factor. Another thing that can cause this is uh, post gastrectomy. So if you have part of your stomach uh, or a lot of your stomach removed, you'll take some of the parietal cells with it and you might not have sufficient intrinsic factor to produce, um, I mean, to absorb enough B12 in the future. And with treatment, you have to give intramuscular B12 injections. It's important to realize that you can give as much oral B12 as you want, but it's not gonna be adequately absorbed if you don't have intrinsic factor. In actual practice, you can like overload somebody with oral B12 and sometimes you get uh, an improvement because some people have like a relative intrinsic factor deficiency, but I want you to think about pernicious anemia as just a absolute zero intrinsic factor, zero chance of resolve re any sort of resolution with oral B12. Because on tests, they'll make you pick IM B12 injections as the correct answer here. So we talked about some of the findings in chronic autoimmune gastritis. What I want to talk about are some complications and how we actually diagnose this. So a complication we can think about is mucosal atrophy. And what's happening is that we have so much damage and chronic inflammation here that you can actually get an intestinal metaplasia here. Because we have autoimmune damage to our parietal cells and, and that whole layer, you can get intestinal metaplasia. And as we saw from Barrett's esophagus, and we'll see in a couple other units, is that metaplasia is a precursor to dysplasia and ultimately cancer. And so chronic autoimmune gastritis is a risk factor for gastric cancer. And you can see if our upper glandular layer is just getting damaged by our own immune system, that can one day lead to some cancer. Okay, and now how do we diagnose this? Well, back in the day, we couldn't diagnose it. I mean, I guess maybe we could have used like a Schilling's test, right? We could have used a Schilling's test somehow and determined whether intrinsic factor was deficient, but we have better tests nowadays. We can actually just test the blood for different antibodies. We can test them against the parietal cell uh, H plus, K plus, ATPase, and we can also, there's antibodies against intrinsic factor directly. And then if you do a tissue biopsy, you're gonna find parietal cell atrophy, which makes total sense because our own immune system's killing them all. Let's talk about the other source of chronic gastritis and that's chronic H. pylori infection. And so if you have H. pylori colonization, it can that can also cause inflammation of your mucosa, but it doesn't invade. It has a couple of sneaky mechanisms to survive in that acidic environment that you have in your stomach. The first thing it does is it produces urease, 
And what urease does is it, it uh, converts ammonia into bicarb, I mean, into CO2, which can, um, excuse me, it converts urea into ammonia and CO2, which creates a basic environment because ammonia is a base. So how does that, and then uh, the CAG-A gene is an oncogene that disrupts our normal epithelial function and increases the risk of gastric cancer developing. And then proteases are pretty simple. They just weaken the gastric mucosa by digesting protein, proteins. So let's look at each of these three virulence factors. So urease, what it can do is it can convert urea into ammonia and CO2. And once you have ammonia, that ammonia can bind to the hydrogen ions and create ammonium. So you've neutralized the acid with a base. The CAG-A oncogene can ultimately cause cancer development. So it can come in here and form a cancer. And then proteases just weaken the gastric mucosa. So for chronic aches pylori gastritis, how is this presenting? Usually it's asymptomatic, but you could have people who have epigastric pain. Um, some of the complications are chronic gastritis that we're talking about right now. You can also develop ulcers. So you can get either gastric or duodenal ulcers. And we talked about peptic ulcer disease in a little bit, and we'll find out that H. pylori is a big risk factor for that as well. So here's our H. pylori. You can get chronic gastritis. And then if it keeps going deeper, I like to think about, you can get gastric and duodenal ulcers. You can also get cancer. We talked about that CAG-A oncogene. And then anything that causes chronic inflammation can do the same thing that we talked about in chronic autoimmune gastritis, where you go from, you know, you, you have normal cells and then you have intestinal metaplasia and then dysplasia and ultimately adenocarcinoma. So the same thing can happen here with the chronic inflammation. The last thing, which is pretty rare, and I see it in all the test textbooks and I'm waiting for a question on it. I haven't had a question on this yet. Um, you can get a malt lymphoma. And so that's increased lymphoid tissue recruitment to the area. And so, and that'll increase your risk of maltoma. So what happens here? What happens here is that all this inflammation is gonna recruit uh, lymphoid tissues to the site. So you're gonna get different lymphoid tissues activated to help out with the inflammation. The problem is that sometimes these this can actually overactivate and you can precipitate your own lymphoma from it. And how do you treat H. pylori? So there's two different therapies and you need to know these therapies cold. There's the antibiotic triple therapy, which is a PPI, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. And you can also use quadruple therapy, which is falling more in favor now, even for those people who are not allergic. And that's a PPI plus bismuth plus metronidazole and a tetracycline. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content.